Hey guys, today's tutorial will be super easy and fun. I haven't been feeling inspired lately, so I sat down to paint and started making these simple tiny wet and wet butterflies and couldn't stop. They are not only easy to do, but super versatile and have a lot of room for creativity. So get your paints and brushes out and let's make some loose beauties. I will be using a size 6 round brush and I will leave links to all the supplies that I use in the description. Before we jump in, I want to show you what wet and what is. So if I pick up plain water with my brush and take a lot of it to the point where it's not dripping but it's substantially wet and then paint out a shape, in this case a butterfly, and now if I go back and get paint, it's up to you how much you want to get. The more you get, the more it will spread. So I picked up a lot of it. Now I'm dropping in the paint and as you can see, it doesn't stay where I put it. It bleeds out instead and makes this beautiful texture when it dries. I'm barely touching the water, but it's really taking all that paint out of my brush. The cool thing about this is if you add more colors, they will mix where they touch and all the paint you put down won't leave the original shape that you made. So you have a lot of control over this even though it's a very random technique. That's all wet and wet is, it's just using wet paint on wet paper. Here are some examples of fun textures you can get with this technique. It's hands down my favorite and most magical technique in watercolor. Now to make the butterflies, I would look up references to get ideas of wing shapes, or you can just wing it. <laughs> the only rule is you have to make both sides symmetrical or close to it. I mean, the little imperfections can be fun. You can use plain water or put down a color first, which I recommend, since it makes it easier to see your shape. Then drop in more colors while it's still wet. Once you're happy with the wings, paint in a simple line in the middle of your butterfly to show its body and add two symmetrical lines that can be curved in any way you like to show the antenna. Just be sure to use the tip of your brush when doing this to keep them thin and you can add dots at the end or you can press out on your brush at the end to make it look more realistic. How much the paint spreads will depend on how wet your paper is, so if you want it to spread less, let it dry a little more before adding more paint. For example, the pink parts here blended out really nicely, but then when I added the yellow paint, it was already dry below it, so it just kept its shape and didn't make any textures or bleeds. I love to play with this and alternate between perfect shapes and bleeds and just, you know, touching the perfect shapes with more paints so they bleed into each other. Be as messy as you want and just have fun. It doesn't matter if your butterflies are right or realistic, you are just making up your own. Think of this as a painting exercise you would do as a kid, when imagination reigned and it was just about having fun in the process. You can even be super playful, like I am in this one, just by doing simple outlines and by using fun shapes. Or you can even use wet and wet inside the outlines and add in fun patterns or textures. There are no limits or rules, so be geometric, abstract, whimsical, whatever you want to be. If you want your butterflies to feel more realistic and magical, then make bigger ones and use references. I did so with this one from one of my classes. This is more time consuming, but the results can be good enough to frame. Once your butterflies are fully dry, you can have even more fun. An easy way is to use colored pencils to add details, colors, and textures. You can even draw in whimsical and fun patterns like I did here, or just do whatever you like. Another idea is to use a technical pen or micron pen, or even a nib and ink, or brush and ink, or whatever you have on your desk. Or you could just paint in details using simple watercolors. The sky is the limit, and you can use whatever you have handy. For finishing touch, like always, I use my white gel pens to add a little dots for an extra magical feeling. This is of course completely optional, but it's something I always do for my style. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoy this mini tutorial and have tons of new ideas of how to use wet and wet technique and how to mix other media with watercolors. You can do this with any subject you like from plants to cats. I even have a mini tutorial on this. So just have fun and give this technique a go when you feel stuck. It will also teach you how to judge how wet or dry your paper is and what the effects will look like when you add the paint. The secret to mastering any skill is practice, so this will definitely improve your watercolor skills and judgment. If you want to share what you make with me, tag me on Instagram. I can't wait to see what you do and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Have fun and stay awesome.